Okay, welcome back to Salt City Counseling, everybody, once again. My name is Scott Carter. I'm a licensed therapist. <laughs> Scoot in. Here in the hot state of Utah, it's been a few weeks since I made any videos. Um, I've had a lot going on. Uh, I've had some health issues. My car died in the middle of nowhere. And quite frankly, I make self-care my number one priority, and so should you. And if you don't, you should. Most people don't really know what that means, but um, nothing's stopping you from learning, right? So in this video, I'm going to continue my Healing Narcissistic Trauma series. If you're new here, I've been doing these videos on healing narcissistic trauma. If you've been in a narcissistic relationship, either with a parent or a partner, whatever the case may be, uh, narcissistic trauma is like psychologically traumatizing, right? Uh, there's like that brainwashing that goes on. And so um, I'm picking this series up. Um, better late than never on completing or continuing this series. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to like mentally uh, rationalize your fear because fear is completely irrational. And I talk about this all the time. The number one, the number one tactic and method and weapon that narcissists use. If you watch my channel, you know what I'm going to say. Say it with me. Fear. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't quite think that was everybody. Okay, this time, fear. Yes, they use fear. Uh, by, by first, they get angry, and then they make you afraid, and they use tremendous amounts of fear, and it turns into a brainwashing thing. I mean, think about this, right? The brainwashing thing when it comes to narcissism and narcissists, they just absolutely bombard you. They, they, they emotionally carpet bomb you. I can't tell you how many times I have heard stories about the narcissist basically pinning the person down and absolutely just uh, uh, just lecturing them for hours and hours on end, telling them how horrible they are, telling them about all the bad things that they did, and it just creates fear and people become afraid of this. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about some exercises, or one main exercise that you can do to help bring a little bit more rationality to these fears so that, you know, it's not so debilitating, so that it doesn't... Um, command your life and control your life like you used to. And I'm uh, going to give you a little bit of an exercise to do at the end here so too. So if you're taking notes, make sure that you uh, write this down and get going on doing this. So I'm going to get into this about like thinking about intellectualizing your fear, using your cognitive skills to break down this fear so that it's not just a reaction. Uh, it's not just a reactive thing, right? And so before I do that, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. Uh, I think I finally made it to th 350 subscribers. The last 50 was a total grind. Um, I'm super close to that first 1 million, so help me grow my channel. Like, subscribe, share, comment. You know what to do. If you have a viewer question, you can ask it in the comment section below. You can email me, scottsy at saltcitycounseling.com. I have been doing some high-conflict um, uh, consultations. I mean, I've been doing them for a few years now, but... If you are seeking those types of service, Scott at SaltCityCounseling.com. If you want to review my materials, my courses on high conflict, divorce, custody, communication, co-parenting, that type of stuff, go to my website, HighConflictCommunity.com. I used to have courses up on Udemy. People were still going to that link and I was still getting like $6 or something. So I completely unpublished those. If you need that material, if you need those courses, please go to my website, HighConflictCommunity.com and take them there. Uh, if you really like my content, please hit the tip jar, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, and let's get on with this, okay? We're gonna, I'm gonna talk about rationalizing this fear because again, it's like when it comes to this narcissistic fear, people are just they just get in that like they instantly become afraid, and that's what the narcissist wants, right? That's how they. That's really the brainwashing that takes place, is they use fear. They use this fear to to cause people to just go into autopilot, in that automatic mode. And to not think about what is being said or how it's being said or does this even make any sense? Most of the time it doesn't. Uh, or, or things that they say are just total hypocrisy. They're usually just as guilty of everything as they accuse other people of, by the way. And just, just as a little factoid for you. But this ra irrational fear, this horribly irrational fear, it's just part of that brainwashing. It's just important to remember, like, this is what they do. This is how they entrap you. This is how they keep you stuck for years and years and years. This is how they continue to control you, even if you have created some distance uh, from them, right? 
And so what you have to remember and keep in mind is that this fear, this irrational fear is really out of proportion, man, to what is actually uh, what is actually happening, right? The amount of fear that I see people experience, you would think that they're afraid for their lives. You would think that their lives were in direct danger. You would think that they had been beaten within the inch of their life by, by the narcissistic type when that's almost never ever the case, right? If I ask people like, what are you afraid that they're gonna do? And the answer is get angry. Now, I understand that when they get angry, right, they just throw everything verbally at you and mentally throw everything at you, including the, the, the kitchen sink, right? And they just come at you and they just absolutely carpet bomb you, I get it. But think about that the, the amount of fear that you might have in regards to this individual and what they do and and if it's out of proportion or not. And nine and a half times out of 10, 99% of the time really, it's completely out of proportion. The amount of fear that they have does not match the actual danger. And so again, this, this fear seems to be associated with, with like physical danger or physical harm. Like you would think that their lives are in danger when it's not. So let me ask you this, right? What are you actually afraid of? If you're taking notes, if you're doing these exercises, I want you to write this down. What are you actually afraid of? Think about it. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid that they will do? What is the worst thing that they will do to you? I understand that they make threats. Uh, honestly, I find that most threats from a narcissistic or borderline type are usually very empty threats. They, their follow through is terrible. Um, you know, even if they say, I'm going to kick you out, you're going to be done. No one's ever going to love you again. They're only appealing to your fear, right? They don't, they almost never follow through with that type of stuff. They're actually terrified of abandonment. A narcissist won't admit it. They'll, they'll act like they don't need you. They're terrified of, of losing that control more than anything. Uh, they're terrified of losing that, like, you know, being on top of you, right? And, and keeping you under their boot. Uh, they're afraid of losing that. Okay, that causes them to be vulnerable, and they're afraid of losing that. So they, they're not, they're less likely to follow through with their threats, man. Um, so what are you actually afraid of them doing? So write them down. What am I afraid of? What am I afraid that they will actually do? And, and most of the time, when I ask this question, people can't come up with anything beyond this answer, this generic blanket answer of, They'll get upset with me. They'll, they'll get really, really angry. Okay? And that, you know, right? If you, that can't actually harm you. It really can't. So, here's the little exercise that, that I want you to do. By the way, it's, it's kind of actually good for me to kind of take a break from doing these because it's been able to give me a different perspective and come at these with a fresh pair of eyes. Um, and so, kind of creating some fresh content. In this series, so make sure that you subscribe and follow me. But <clears throat> here's the exercise, right? And in the past, I've talked a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot about meditation. Here it comes again. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to repeat this mantra. I want you to write it down. They cannot hurt me. I am not afraid of their anger. I am not afraid of them. Okay. And if you adopt this mantra and you tell it to yourself over and over again, and you cultivate that emotion. And then when you meditate, this is why meditation is really important and why it's really effective. When you meditate and you just cultivate that emotion, uh, meditation is the most effective thing you can do to change how your, how your mind and your brain is organized, okay? Nothing will change your mind quite like meditation. Meditation will absolutely help your mind change. And if you incorporate these emotions of, I am safe, they cannot hurt me, I am not afraid of them, they do not control me, right? You can write down a whole series of mantras, repeat them over and over again. You can kind of hypnotize yourself. You can kind of unbrainwash yourself. I talked about this in the brainwashing video that I did about um, narcissists and their brainwashing tactics. The best thing that you can do if you feel like you have been brainwashed is you can unbrainwash yourself. I can't do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. But the thing is, is it's, it's actually super empowering. If you can do this for yourself, it's very, very, very empowering. You, you kind of start to really find yourself. You start to have an identity outside of that control that they've had over you. Okay, so go do that exercise. I'm curious to hear what people think, what types of results that people get. 
And so that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.